Hello and welcome back. I am Ahmad and in this video I'm going to talk about calculation of ultimate load that we can apply on a beam which the material is elastic, perfectly plastic material. For example, uh, in a steel structures, when the maximum load is applied and one point which is under the maximum bending moment starts to be yielding, after that we might have some capacity left in the beam until the beam starts to be completely unstable. Assume that we have a beam which is under the force load of P and if we sketch the bending moment diagram of this determinate beam, assuming that the total length is L and force is placed in the middle span, the maximum bending moment will be PL over 4 and the moment is completely positive in the entire length of the beam. So uh, assume that the elastic bending moment in this playlist we calculated elastic and plastic bending moment can be calculated according to sigma yielding times W elastic. After reaching to this point the beam starts to be plastic at least in one point which is in the mid span under the maximum bending moment. After that we have some capacity left until the entire cross section in the mid span starts to be completely plastic. So if the moment reaches to plastic bending moment, this point which is under the maximum bending moment that by increasing the force it becomes plastic is called plastic hinge. Meaning that we have another hinge which is not the mechanical hinge in the center of the beam after applying the load or increasing the load. And this hinge is plastic hinge. Here we can see that now our beam is completely unstable. So this is the collapse load that we can apply until the structure becomes completely unstable. This system which is starting to be unstable is called mechanism. So when the structure is determined, the maximum number of uh, plastic hinges can be only one. But when the structure is uh, indeterminate, the number of plastic hinges will be the degree of indeterminacy plus one. Meaning that if uh, the structure is indeterminate by the degree of one, then we would expect to have maximum two plastic hinges. So I'm not going to go through detail of uh, how many uh, plastic hinges we have. I'm going to start to calculate the ultimate load on a beam uh, based on the assumption of being unstable. Plastic hinges can be formed in the rigid joints and also under the uh, point loads. When the beam is under distributed load it might be a little bit different that we will go through that uh, in the next video. So now Let's start with one simple example. We have a beam which is under two forces P, A, B, C and D and let's assume that distance for each part is A with the total length of 3A. Uh, based on the indeterminate structure calculation you can use any kind of uh, method for calculation. This force reaction will be two-thirds of P and the other one will be full four-thirds of P and the bending moment at point A will be P times A. Now we can sketch the shear force and bending moment, four third of P and then one third of P, two third of P and then the area, four third PA positive, one third PA positive and this is two third of PA negative. Bending moment diagram, the moment in the first support or rigid support is P times A which is negative plus four third of PA it will be one third PA and then another one third is added, two third of PA and then it goes back to zero. So here is the elastic uh, bending moment diagram. The maximum bending moment is uh, at point A which is the fixed point. So when you solve it analytically you can spot where the first plastic hinge would occur. Here at point A if this PA becomes plastic, then the beam or point A will be replaced by a plastic hinge. The form of the beam 
will be changed to be point A, a simple hinge support or pin support. So the first step is calculation of this uh, PA. The maximum M is EA and it can be M plastic, meaning that the first force that we can apply is MP divided by A. And when the force P reaches to this value, then the first plastic hinge forms at point A point A becomes plastic hinge. So from now on, our beam will become a simple supported beam at point A and at point B, it was originally a hinge support or roller. But you can see that the structure is still stable, meaning that you can add force to this section. So let's name it as delta P. Now, if we sketch the bending moment diagram for this new beam this will be delta p times a so now this new beam is not neutral meaning that there is bending moment in every single section of this cross section for example at point a the bending moment is already reached to m plastic at point b the initial bending moment is one third of pa positive and at point c the initial bending moment is two thirds of pa so if we add this delta P times A diagram, new diagram to the earlier stage. So if we add these two graphs together or these two bending moment at point A, the maximum bending moment will be PA plus zero at point B will be one third of PA plus delta P times A at point C. It will be two third of PA plus delta PA and at point D, as far as it was originally a pin or roller, it's, it remains to be zero. We know that point A is already plastic and between point B and C, we can see that point C is taking more bending moment. As a result, this point is closer to be plastic rather than point B. As a result, this will become plastic hinge with the further delta p that you apply to the beam. For calculation, we can say that uh, pa is already mp, equation number one. As a result, delta p times a will be one third of mp. And delta p that we can apply is one third of mp over a. As a result, the maximum load that we can apply to this beam will be p max, will be p1 plus delta p, and then it will be MP divided by A plus one third of MP divided by A in total four third MP divided by A. Now we have the second plastic hinge, which will form at point C. If we look at our beam after reaching to this point, we have one plastic hinge here at point A and we have the second one at point C and roller at point D. Now here we can see that the beam is unstable. As we can see, only two plastic hinges can form. Uh, from the beginning, if we calculated the degree of indeterminacy for this beam, we can see that at point A we have one, two, three support reaction. At point D we have one support reaction. So unknown number of unknown is four and how many equations do we have for the equilibrium? We have sigma f x equals zero sigma fy equals zero and sigma m equals zero. We have only three equations. As a result, the structure is indeterminate with the degree of four minus three, one, and the number of plastic hinge, plastic hinges will be one plus one equals two. As we can see here, it can be maximum two plastic hinges. The other method is using upper bond theorem, which is uh, based on the collapse form of the beam. It can be also used in slabs for calculation of the yield time. For example, yield theory in the surfaces, uh, it has the same concept. For this case, we imagine, first we have to calculate how many plastic hinges would form in the structure until it becomes unstable or it becomes mechanism. For example, here we can see that it is two. Then we have to find out in which locations it can happen. In this case, uh, as far as the loads are concentrated loads, it is very easy to find out. It can happen under the point forces or on the rigid supports. For example, here it can be formed in A or B or C. We have three 
susceptible points to happen as a result if we go with that theorem a and b can be one option a and c can be the other option and the other one is b and c so we have three options uh, for calculation and we assume that after these two points for example a and b becomes plastic hinges then the structure will be completely unstable let's start with point a and b if you assume that a and b would be plastic hinges when the beam becomes mechanism this will be your beam for the point for the moment that it becomes completely unstable and then you need to sketch the slightly after reaching to that load for example here the collapse would happen this way because then it is completely unstable and the elements will be line elements for determining the collapse load we can use the theory of conservative internal and external work for here the external work will be always summation of force times deformation let's assume that this is coming down for delta and as far as the other force is in the middle of BD that will be half of delta which is delta divided by 2 so the total external work in this case will be P times delta plus P times delta divided by 2 which is 3 over 2 P times delta internal work refers to the plastic moment times the rotation summation of plastic moment times rotation of the relevant point here in this case for example point a becomes plastic we have this theta point b becomes plastic from two sides from one side it will be theta and from the other side it will be theta prime the relation between theta and theta prime is very simple we can write down that this is a this is also a this is also a delta divided by a will be theta delta divided by 2a will be theta prime meaning that theta times a will be as same as theta prime times 2a as a result theta prime will be theta divided by 2 point d is a hinge but it was a mechanical hinge meaning that it is not making any internal work because it is from the beginning it was free to rotate but point b was uh, the continuation of the entire beam and when it comes to the collapse moment then it is completely a plastic hinge and both sides of that point is uh, rotated one side with the angle of theta the other side with the angle of theta prime so here i can write down that for point a it will be mp times theta plus mp times theta for point b left plus mp times theta prime point b so internal work will be mp times theta plus theta plus theta divided by 2 substituting theta prime then it will be 5 over 2 mp times theta the next will be you just need to write down external work equals to internal work and then 3 over 2 p times delta will be 5 over 2 mp times theta and we know that theta can be substituted as delta over a as a result p will be 5 over 3 mp divided by a this is the first force that we calculated if this type of collapse happens then the maximum load that can be applied to the system will be 5 over 3 mp divided by a now we need to assume that a and c are the points that uh, when the beam becomes mechanism those two points will become plastic hinges point a and this time point c again the same concept we can sketch the slightly after starting to be unstable this time i assume that this uh, point c is delta at point d at point b it will be delta divided by two let's assume that the rotation at point a is theta and the other side will be two theta the same concept external work will be summation of p times delta will be p times delta divided by two plus p times delta three over two p times delta internal work will be summation of mp times rotation it will be mp times theta for point a plus mp times theta for point b left and plus mp times 2 theta for point b 
in the right or mp times theta now again the same equation external work as same as internal work then it will be 3 over 2 p times delta equals to 4 mp times theta and i can substitute theta here will be delta divided by 2a as a result p will be 4 over 3 mp divided by a we can see that this value is smaller than the other one means that if we increase the load point c will become plastic sooner than point uh, we can calculate for the other two to cross check that that is greater than this 4 over 3 mp divided by a point b and c so it means that point a will remain as a rigid point and point b and c will become plastic so here as far as a is rigid then the member which is attached to point a remain horizontally and then we have this collapse shape mode delta and p again external work summation of p times delta will be p times zero plus p times delta and internal work p point c theta both sides are theta so it will be mp times zero for point b left plus mp times theta for point b right plus mp times theta for point c left and plus mp times theta for point c right meaning that it is 3 mp times theta of which theta is delta divided by a again external work to be as same as internal work as a result p times delta 3 mp times theta delta over a and p will be 3 mp over a meaning that if you have or if you keep point a to be completely rigid and it doesn't take plastic bending moment it remains uh, under elastic and then it can uh, take up to three times mp over a we can see that this is higher than the other two values that we already calculated so the collapse load or the ultimate load that we can apply to this case is the minimum of all cases p when a and b becomes plastic when a and b become plastic when a and c and when b and c so this one the first one was 5 over 3 mp over a this was 4 over 3 mp over a and this was 3 mp over a which the minimum is 4 over 3 mp over a this is exactly what we calculated uh, with uh, finding the bending moment diagram which is the same that's the end of this video uh, we went through the upper bond theorem for calculation of the collapse load and when the beam starts to be unstable it is called mechanism in the beams and always we can calculate the uh, degree of indeterminacy and add with the value of one to find the maximum number of plastic hinges for a beam to become mechanism Thank you for watching. In the next video, I will go through a simple calculation for distributed load. Uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye.